Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the name that is above every name. This is Evangelist Mike Brown, and this is SanctifyingTruth.org, episode 37, part number 12 of Paul's Swan Song. This will be March 23rd, 2019, and we praise God's holy name for this blessed privilege that we have to be able to send the Word of God out into the ends of the earth. I thank God uh, for new listeners, a new listener in Australia, and one in the United Kingdom. I just pray God will take His Word and send it out to the ends of the world. Not for me, not for my honor and glory, but for His and for the advancement of the body of Christ. As King David said in Psalm 115, verse 1, Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory, for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. And I say amen, amen, and amen, David. Well, we wish we were physically able to be in Atal, Alabama at our street preaching post, but we're not physically able to go today, so therefore, by the grace of God, we're recording this episode, and I just pray that you'll pray for us. We need God's help, leadership, and guidance in our health. He knows exactly what we stand in need of. We have this terrible malady of a disease called Crohn's, and it'll suck the life's blood out of you, literally. And you know what the Word of God says in Leviticus 17, 11? For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And the Lord adds, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood, the blood of the Lamb of God, which make an atonement for your souls. Have you been washed, my friend, in the precious blood of Christ? Uh, the Apostle John said in Revelation 1, 5, Now unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. The baptismal waters can't wash your sins away, my friend. Your heart must be washed out with the precious blood of Christ shed on Calvary's cross. Oh, how we praise God for it. How we thank God that we were washed, and made clean, made whole. In September 1979, oh, my friend, I've never got over it and I never will. I'll never cease to praise my Lord as I wake up every morning with him on my mind. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. My friend, I'd appreciate it if you would take the time to leave comments or questions, good, bad, or indifferent, at my Podbean site, that's sanctifyingtruth.org, or at my Facebook page, Saved Man. That's capital S, and the rest of the rest of the letters lowercase. Saved man, it'll carry you there, and you can see what we're all about. Let me know where you are listening from, and if you'll tell your friends to tune in, it would be an encouragement to me, and hopefully to them. And the words of the living God, the truth, will get out. And my friend, our Lord Jesus Christ. Praying to the Father in the Lord's Prayer, John seventeen seventeen. this is what it's all about. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And if you've been around for any length of time, you know what thy word is. You know what the book of God is. It's a singular book, my friend. It's the one that he has preserved from this generation forever. Psalm chapter 12, verse 6 and 7. For the words of the Lord 
are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of gold, purified seven times to complete perfection. Now get it. Thou wilt keep them, O Lord. Thou wilt preserve them from this generation forever. There's a promise to you from God that he would not lose his words in the translation for the English-speaking people. I hope you got it. Now we're going back to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. I hope you get your Bible and uh, get these scriptures out. My friend, this is uh, comparing scripture with scripture. Here a little, there a little, and we'll come to the knowledge of the truth by the grace of God with the help of the Holy Spirit, our teacher. You cannot grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord without turning the pages of God's book. It takes a little bit of effort on the believer's part, but my friend, God will bless you for it. 2 Timothy 4, verse 16. The Apostle Paul said, At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray, God, that it may not be laid to their charge. He held no animosity toward his enemies. He was like the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Stephen, Lord, Father, forgive them, as he's being stoned to death. Acts chapter 7. But look at verse 17. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And another place he adds, world without end. My friend, listen, we are preserved in Christ Jesus and called. Jude verse 1. You don't have to worry about making heaven if you've been saved by the grace of God and washed in the precious blood of Christ. Now, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 7, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. Paul was given more revelations than any other author of the books of the Bible. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. My friend, to be buffeted is like they did to our Lord Jesus Christ. When those Roman soldiers were mocking him and during his mock trial, and when they were hitting him with their fist, that's being buffeted, to rap with the fist. God allows it. The messenger of Satan buffeted Paul. He had a thorn in the flesh to keep him down, to keep his body of flesh under subjection. 2 Corinthians 12, 8, For this thing, for the thorn in the flesh, I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. Now, who wouldn't? God help us. My friend, I've begged, I've begged God more than thrice that God would allow it to depart from me. But t 2 Corinthians 12, 9, And he said unto me, Get it, My grace is sufficient for thee. Now the Lord's about to tell you what his grace 
is. For my strength, that's his grace, is made perfect in weakness. Now, my friend, that don't make sense. Humanly speaking, my strength, God said, is made perfect in weakness. Now, my flesh wanted to go street preaching today. I wanted to go street preach about an hour and a half, two hours, as long as I could possibly stand up. But my friend, I'm too weak. And God says, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. And Paul says, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me the way the Holy Spirit of God rested upon our Lord Jesus Christ when he was anointed for his three-and-a-half-year ministry at his baptism. The Spirit of God descended in the form of a dove and rested upon him. 2 Corinthians 12, 10, Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. My friend, as long as this flesh has the zeal of a young man, that testosterone is flowing. I've been there, my friend. Listen, I've been able to preach for half a day on the street. Just go right on. I've been able to preach uh, two or three different places in a day's time. But not anymore, my friend. When I am weak, though, Paul says, then am I strong. I'm strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Ephesians chapter 6. Philippians 4.13, the Apostle Paul says, Therefore, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Now, my friend, the correct interpretation of that scripture is God will give you the strength to do all things that he wants you to do through Christ. If you don't have the strength to do it, it's not the will of God. He says in Acts chapter 20 and verse 26, Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. Now, could we say that? Have we been strengthened, my friend, by God? And yes, we have, to be a bold, spirit-filled witness unto him. Paul says, I'm pure from the blood of all men. I wished I could say that, but I cannot. Paul could. He witnessed to every man that he come in contact with. And that should be our goal. Because I'm telling you, my friend, at the judgment seat of Christ, there's going to be a soul winner's crown, the crown of uh, righteousness, will be given out to all those, my friend, who have been a soul winner. And the Bible says he is pure from the blood of all men. And that's, that should be our goal. And by the grace of God, we will do it by His grace. And we'll do it for His honor and His glory. And by the way, that's the crown of rejoicing. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 19. Paul says, For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? There it is. Here's... Here's the reason for the crown given. Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? Get it? For ye are our glory and joy. 
the ones he had won to the Lord Jesus Christ. And no, there's not as many being won today in these last days of the church age, but God's still winning them. And my friend, basically overseas where they've never heard, such as in Africa, we're, su we're supporting missionary pastors in Africa who are winning them by the dozens. And my friend, they're producing indigenous churches and they're going on for God like nothing's being done here in America. He says in Acts 20, verse 27, For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Now Paul says in verse number 17 of 2 Timothy chapter 4, Notwithstanding the Lord stood with me. Has he ever stood with those who live for him and put their trust in him? Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 7, the Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. We must trust in the Lord. And my friend, he will protect us, he will guide us, in our past. Paul said, I've not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, the Lord Jesus said, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and right there in your neighborhood, and in all Judea, in your city, and in Samaria, in all of the state, and unto the uttermost part of the earth by supporting missionaries who give up their life to carry the gospel to the ends of the world. We thank God for missionaries like Brother Ronnie Doss in Honduras, We've been supporting for many years. May God bless that man and pray for him and his family and all of those who are with serving the Lord with him for his children's home and pray that God would send him a young, energetic couple who are sold out to God. He needs help. Pray for Brother Wes Gazaway and his wife missionary to the Muslims of Egypt. May God bless him. Pray for Israel Warren up in Alaska. Help him. May pray that he'll help he'll be able to get his church finished and win those people to the Lord Jesus Christ. My friend God will help them, but we've got to help them in prayers and with our money. The reason the Lord stood with Paul and strengthened him is Paul stood against the world and for Christ. My friend, he made no bones about it. He had nothing left for the world. His life was Christ. He said, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Now, as the Apostle Paul was out there on the sea, headed toward Rome, his final destiny, in Acts chapter 27, verse 23, he's speaking to the mariners, and he says, For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am key, and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. 
How be it, now get it, everything's not going to be well with the ship. How be it, we must be cast upon a certain island. All life will be preserved, but my friend, tribulations on the way. But God made it. Paul made sure, God made sure that Paul made it to Rome where he spent his final two years. Joshua 1, 5, There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, God speaking to Joshua, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. And it came to pass. And the Bible says in Hebrews 13, 5, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. He said, I'll be with thee even unto the end. And Paul says in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. And he says that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear. That was the will of God. The Apostle Paul was the apostle to the uncircumcision. The Gentiles. The bride of Christ is basically a Gentile bride. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, the Bible says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission or the forgiveness of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, Paul viewed himself as responsible for every Gentile sinner to hear the gospel, and we ought to do the same. Don't pass up an opportunity to witness for our Lord. The fruit or evidence of being filled with the Spirit is a bold, burdened heart for the lost, not speaking in tongues, some kind of unknown gibberish, which ceased according to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and 14. Un tongues ceased when that which is perfect had come. When the completion of the canon of Scripture had come, and my friend God had ceased the signs of the apostles to the Jews, then tongues ceased. Every time you hear tongues in the book of Acts, every time they are employed, an unknown tongue, my friend, it was to prove to the Jews that the Gentiles also had received the gift of the Spirit of God. And it was not some unknown gibberish. It was a language that had been given them without having to go to language school. Amen and amen. Paul was given the gospel of the grace of God in order that the Gentile body of Christ, the church, may be saved, built up in sound doctrine through his 14 epistles and made ready for our marriage in heaven. Gentiles, or Jews for that matter, are not saved by Peter's gospel in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. That was directed solely at the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Nor is anyone being saved by John the Baptist 
baptism of repentance since the full revelation of salvation by the grace of God plus nothing minus nothing was given to the apostle Paul. You don't run back to Acts chapter 238 and say you've got to repent and be baptized to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The book of Acts is a transition book. Now Galatians chapter 1 and verse 11. The Apostle Paul says, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel, the gospel, which was preached of me, not of Peter, not of John the Baptist, is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For I neither received it of man, my friend, he said, I was taught it by the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ personally. And he says in verse 13, For you have heard of my conversation in time past, in the Jews' religion, in Judaism, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. He stood there holding the coats of those who stoned Stephen to death. And I guarantee you, my friend, that's when the Holy Ghost of God began to prick Paul's heart. When he heard Stephen saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Oh, my. This old Judaizer Paul was smitten in the heart, and he never got past that. He said in verse Galatians 1.14, And profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, and called me by his grace, just like he did Jeremiah in chapter 1 of Jeremiah. Verse 1, did he do this? Galatians 1, 16, to reveal his son in me. Of all people, the apostle Saul, Saul the great persecutor of the church, after he got saved, God changed his name. He changed his heart and life, changed his name to Paul. And they wouldn't have anything to do with him. And my friend Barnabas took up with him, says it's all right. And my friend, the church eventually accepted him. He who was the martyr, my friend, became a missionary. He who was the persecutor became the preacher of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says in verse 16, to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. He didn't go to the apostles, any of the disciples, and say, what do y'all think? Can I get a revelation from you all? No, listen to what he said. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. My friend, listen to what it says in Galatians 1.18. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. The apostle Paul went out into the wilderness and he met with God. He was given the revelation of the mystery of the body of Christ over a period of three years. His schooling was three years. Romans chapter 11, verse 13, For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. If by any means I may provoke to immolation them which are my flesh, and might save some of them, for the casting, if the casting away of them, 
the Jews, Israel, be the reconciling of the world, the Gentile world. What shall the receiving of them, Israel, be, get it, but life from the dead? Ezekiel chapter 38, 39, and 40. My friend, the dry bones will be resurrected from the dead. God is going to yet choose Israel. Isaiah 14, verse 1. God, my friend, is not through with Israel. God is going to restore her. Paul said, I'm the apostle and the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. Ephesians 3 and verse 1, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Rome, but of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. He was in Rome, imprisoned, writing the epistle, uh, the prison epistles, my friend, for Jesus Christ. He was the prisoner of Jesus Christ. God got him alone. God got him in a quiet place where he could think, and the Holy Ghost of God penned the epistles, the prison epistles to the church. Ephesians 3, 2, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. The only way you'll ever be able to understand the mystery of the body of Christ, that is Christ in us, Colossians 1.29, the hope of glory, the mystery of the body of Christ, how that God would save Jews and Gentiles and put them into one body and make us all members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones, the inorganic body of the Lord Jesus Christ. His physical body is seated at the right hand of the Father, right as we speak, making intercession for all that believe. But his inorganic body, his mystical body, is here on this earth, praising his holy name and being witnesses unto him obeying him. He says, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages, since Genesis, was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. The only soul-saving gospel, my friend, is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Paul said, I delivered unto you that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. We believe what the scriptures say. We believe what God has preserved for us. And my friend, it has made a new creature out of us. We bless God's holy name for the gospel of the grace of God. This gospel is not a gospel of works, friend. Titus 3, 5, it's not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. And I'll go a little further right there, my friend. You better read your Bible. 
There hadn't been one soul saved since Adam by works. They were all saved by faith in God. Saved, my friend, by the grace of God. Abra- Romans chapter 4, Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Praise be to the Lamb of God. <clears throat> now Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 5, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed in his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body, the body of Christ, the church, and partakers of his promise in Christ, the promises of the Old Testament by the gospel. Romans 2.28, now get it. Listen up, my friend, and pay attention. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, as the body, outwardly in the flesh. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. My friend, the Moses' circumcision can do you no good. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart. That's the operation of God of Colossians chapter 2. In the spirit, in the spirit of man, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. My friend, We are Abraham's seed through Christ. The seed has come, and the body of the Lord Jesus Christ is being built up. We're built up in him. We're not the, the final formula for salvation was given to Paul. Heretics such as Campbellites, and all the rest of the baptismal regenerationalists never get past Peter's and John the Baptist baptism of repentance that was given to Israel alone. Peter is addressing the lost sheep of the house of Israel in Acts chapter 2. John the Baptist is preaching to Israel. My friend, you will break your spiritual neck and get stuck in heresy your whole life if you don't rightly divide the book of Acts, Hebrews, and James. Church doctrine is taught from Paul's epistles. You can get spiritual help an application from the other books of the Bible, but strict, sound church doctrine comes straight out of Paul's epistles, Romans through Philemon. Hebrews is also written by the Apostle Paul, but it is written to the Hebrews, and that is a natural-born Jew not Abraham's spiritual seed of Romans chapter 2. And Paul says, And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. The child of God is invincible until his course is run. As long as we keep clean hands and a pure heart, and are serving our Lord by witnessing to sinners, Satan cannot devour us. My friend, the Bible says that the devil comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But God's hedge of protection cannot be broken through unless we allow him a source of our weakness. 
Romans chapter 8 and verse 13, For if you walk after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify, put to death the deeds of the flesh, ye shall live. You'll have spiritual life, my friend, and you'll be filled with all the fullness of the Lord Jesus Christ. My friend, you can be delivered out of the mouth of the lion, just like the Apostle Paul said he was. Joseph, you take, for instance, the greatest type of Christ in Scripture in over 153 particulars, was delivered from death at the hands of his own brothers and delivered from prison and death from Potiphar and became the second ruler in Egypt. Genesis 41 and verse 43. Type, my friend, the greatest type of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Genesis chapter 41, verse 41, the Bible says, And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, Pharaoh, a type of God the Father. Just a type. See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. Egypt being a type of the world. Joseph, a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. My friend, everything was centralized. All food was centralized into Egypt, and Joseph was set over it. Men's lives were held in Joseph's hands. Genesis 41, verse 42, And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. Gold is for deity. In verse 43, And he made him to ride in the second chariot. Second, my friend, God the Son, second person of the Trinity, the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bow the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. My friend, Joseph, the greatest type of the Lord Jesus Christ, was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Daniel was made the third ruler in Belshazzar's kingdom. In Daniel chapter 5 and verse 29, then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold, there it is, deity, about his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. Here, Daniel is a type of the Holy Spirit of God, third person of the Trinity the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Type of the Holy Spirit who interprets the Scripture and guides us into all truth. In Daniel chapter 3 and verse 29, get it. Therefore I make a decree, Nebuchadnezzar says, that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. My friend, there was not even the smell of smoke left upon them in the furnace of fire. They even kept their coats on. They didn't even get hot. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. 
Then Daniel was delivered from the den of lions. And by the way, that's not lion's den. That's the den of lions. There is a difference. Daniel 6, 18. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him. His sleep went from him. Then the king rose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou servest continually, that's the key, able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel, the angel of the Lord, a pre-incarnate appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ, and has shut the lion's mouth that they might not hurt me. For as much as before him, innocency was found in me. And also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. My friend, he was obedient to those who had the rule over him, as the Bible commands in Romans chapter 13, Daniel 6, 23. Then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. And the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions, them, their children, and their wives, and the lions had the mastery of them, and break all their bones in pieces, or ever they came at the bottom of the den. In other words, my friend, there was nothing left. Jonah was delivered from the whale's belly when he has his when he had his prayer meeting and agreed to go and preach to the Gentile dog Ninevites. My friend Paul was being dragged off in the devil's mouth when the Lord delivered him. He wasn't devoured. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith. That's the faith once delivered unto the saints. Jude Verse 1, my friend, your only hope and prayer is the book, the faith. Your safety is in the faith. God knocked the teeth out of the lion at Calvary's cross. Jesus Christ got up from the dead, and my friend, he ever lives to make intercession for all those who believe in him. His death, burial, and glorious resurrection, and all the devil can do is roar against God's children. I'm telling you something, though, my friend. If you don't live for your Savior, that roaring is going to make you a miserable wretch and a wreck of a saint. You can write that down. You either do right or you'll be you'll have the devil scared out of you. The lion can roar at God's people, but he cannot devour us, for our Lord Jesus Christ has kicked his teeth out at Calvary in Isaiah chapter fifty, verse six. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, I gave my back to the smiters, to the scourgers, the Roman government, and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. 
spitting in God's face, spitting in our Lord's face. My friend, it should have been us. He said, for the Lord God will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint. And I know that I shall not be ashamed. The Lord Jesus Christ set his face as a flint to go to Calvary to be crucified. Get it? Isaiah 50 verse 8. For the Lord God will help me. Verse, he is near that justifieth me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. He's addressing the devil. Who is mine adversary? Let him come near to me. The Lord Jesus Christ, the captain of our salvation, is inviting our adversary and his adversary, the devil, to come in near to him at the cross of Calvary. Behold, the Lord God will help me. Who is he that shall condemn me? Lo, they shall all wax old as a garment. The moth shall eat them up. Who is among you that feareth the Lord, that obeyeth the voice of his servant? the Lord Jesus Christ, that walketh in darkness and hath no light. Let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. You rest upon God and my friend, everything will be all right. The Lord Jesus Christ destroyed him that had the power of death when he went through death, hell, and the grave and resurrected from the dead three days later. Hebrews 2 and verse 14, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, He, Christ also, Himself likewise, took part of the same. Part. He took flesh. But He had, my friend, the blood of God. That through death, He might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. My friend, if you fear death, you're either not saved or you're out of the will of God. The Holy Spirit of God gives perfect peace to his children. And my friend, we're able to say Pray as the Apostle John prayed in his last prayer, Revelation 22, even so come Lord Jesus, either by the grave or my friend out through the clouds to the third heaven, even so come Lord Jesus. Galatians 1, 3 Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Get it? Who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. He died for you, saint, to deliver you from the things of this present evil world. And he's not pleased when you live after the flesh. And you don't look to him for your satisfaction. 2 Corinthians 1.8 For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves. We got the answer of death, my friend. We got the book in our heart. We got the Holy Ghost in our heart. We've got Christ in us, the hope of glory that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, that's hell, and doth deliver every day of our life, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us the rest of our life, and one day deliver us safe to glory. 
1 Corinthians 10, 13, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. The devil cannot devour you, friend. You have no excuse for not living for God. Peter was delivered from sure death. Over there in Acts chapter 12, verse 11, And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel, there he is again, and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod, and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. John the Baptist, my friend, had just been killed by old Herod, and they expected Peter to be killed the next morning, but he was delivered. David was delivered in Psalm chapter 56. My friend, I could go on and on. Oh, I could go on the rest of the day until I drop telling you about how God delivers His saints. Psalm 31, verse 1, In Thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in Thy righteousness. Not our righteousness, God's righteousness. He says, Bow down thine ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be thou my strong rock for an house of defense to save me. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Pull me out of the net that they have laid privily for me. For thou art my strength. Into thine hand I commend my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. My friend, the devil cannot kill the body of the saint that is doing the will of God. He is invincible. There's a book called The Invincible Might of Weakness. You ought to look it up and get that book. However, the Lord will allow Satan to destroy the body of the sinning saint that won't get right with God. You better get the book out and you better thoroughly read 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Paul orders the Corinthians to forsake the fornicator and Paul himself delivered him over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Our flesh is not saved yet, my friend. It's your flesh that's going to cause you problems until you submit yourself to God. You might as well go ahead and do it today. You might as well go ahead and get the, the grace and the peace of God which passeth all understanding flooding your soul. Amen. And my friend, listen. The only way to God is through our repentance of unbelief. John chapter 16, of sin because they believe not on me. And my friend, not only repentance, but faith in the death, burial, and glorious resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Well, I hope you're preparing to go to a Bible preaching church tomorrow. And may the Lord bless you and have a good day.